Hey everybody, I am getting ready to put a backing on the long arm and I just wanted to show you how I do that using so tight's magnets. But first things first, before you ever start doing any kind of backing, you got a Swiffer. Now if you have a pet especially, but even if you don't, uh, your backing is going to be on the floor. So you really want to make sure that you have got all fur up and even if you have carpet, I would run the vacuum and make sure that you're not going to get any kind of fur or anything or dust or, you know, you might have thread or something like that. So doing this is just a handy thing to make sure we don't get any Frito on the backing. The King Quilter 2 Elite is an 18 inch throat machine and I love that size. I learned from a friend of mine that whatever size throat is your long arm, subtract six, which is three inches in the front and three inches in the back, and that's going to give you your quilting pattern space that you can use on your long arm for your long arm patterns. Well, 12 is plenty for me. Most of the patterns that I stitch are eight to 10-ish in there, most of them. Some smaller, some a little bit larger, but 12 is plenty. I have had a longer uh, throat space long arm, and it was just too big. And I'm five foot nine, so I like the ability to be able to reach behind the machine and turn it on and off. And I can do that because of this frame. If I had a much larger long arm, I wasn't able to reach that, or when I had one, I wasn't able to reach that. So I'm going to load the backing on now with sew tights. So this frame comes with cloth leaders, and I have sewn in the backings for the sew tights into the edge of the leader. I just sewed a, uh, a pocket right there by folding the edge of the leader up and I sewed a pocket and I just made sure to keep it straight using the original stitching on the leader as a guideline and now I have a pocket here and then there are stitches right here I have a video on how to install these on your long arm so I have the wrong side of the backing toward me I'm gonna fold the edges together and find center like this and then I want that center seam on the center mark. I used a Sharpie and placed a center mark in the middle of the leader. You don't have to do this, I just like to. Okay, so I'm gonna put this right here, approximately center, so that that seam, the center seam of the backing is sitting on top. If you have a 108, backing you don't need to do this but this just helps everything stay straight right from the get-go and if you have a situation where you want this center seam to be exactly center of the quilt that you are stitching you can certainly mark that quilt top and make sure that it aligns with the top here as well on the sides when you're getting ready to put that on so I have some of the so tights magnums. These are the strongest ones that they make. And I just dropped two. So now that I have the center seam down the top, I've got stuff draped all over here. What I'm going to do is to take the center of the top and you can fold that together. You can mark it with a little snip if you like. I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna put these two sides together and find center. You can probably do this before you put it on the center seam part. I'm just gonna make a tiny little snip. Okay. I also have center marked on the leader on the top one up here. So now that I have snipped that little center on the selvage edge. I'm going to go under the idle rail. That's what this one is. And I have a zero center tape on here 
just you don't have to have that it just gives you an idea of where things are and I'm gonna put that notch right there and I'm gonna pop a magnet on it right up on top and then I'm gonna come down to the far end and take this and line it up on top of the magnets right along with the stitch line that I used to put the pocket of the magnet in there the pocket for the backing and I'm going to do the same thing over here on this end up underneath and see I can reach this because this frame is not ginormously huge if you are a home quilter like me you'll love this you'll love it too if you are doing it for other people this is a great size frame so now I've got three magnets holding center and both ends I'm going to take two more and I'm going to just pop it somewhere into the middle. Okay, so what I'm looking for right now in the well right here is that when this is folded out straight with the seam on the top rail right here, do I have any drag lines? And I just gave it a little tug, you might have noticed, and I want you to see right there, there is a drag line right here. So this needs to come back further this way. And I am looking to make sure that it is nice and smooth. It goes down into the well and comes back up. And we don't have any, we don't want anything that looks like this. See that? Where you've got these wrinkles, you don't want that. We're just making sure the fabric is straight. We don't know that it was printed straight. We don't know that it was cut straight. But we do know we don't have any kind of thing going on in here. So there are no wrinkles, there are no drag lines, and so I think it's going to be just fine. So I am going to put this bracket on right here, and I'm going to roll this up with my hands. Again, easy to reach, making sure it doesn't have to be exact on the ends as you roll it up. Don't get all hung up on that. I'm just making sure I don't have any ripples or bumps that are forming in the roll on the top. This looks really good. It looks nice and smooth. Okay, this looks great. When you use this method, you won't get the big droopy down here on the other end as well. Okay, so now I'm ready to try to get the bottom side, the bottom end of it, on here. So I'm going to grab it from the bottom and hold it up and just let it drop down. And I'm going to snip center again probably should have done this before I started but I didn't so it's all right and I have got a center mark again on this railing right here on that leader and I'm using the stitch line for the pocket for the backing as where to align the edge of the fabric. So I'm going to do the same thing down here on the end that I did before. Now I've got things up underneath here and it's probably a good idea for if you can move them to move them. If you can, and I can, mine are very easy to move because I want that fabric to hang. I also have a hammock under here for batting and that's fine. That's not going to be a problem. And I want to get all the folds out of the fabric as best I can. I get asked all the time about these little cabinets. I got them at Wayfair. And I have a little stool over here. Okay, you want to get that stuff out of there if you can. Okay, I know some of us were caught on, you know, we're short on space and we have to use the underside of the long arm for storage. Okay, this looks good. Now I'm looking down in here in the well and I am looking for big creases and folds and I am seeing a little one right here already. Let me get you and see if you can see down in there. Probably not, but there is one right here. So that tells me that I'm going to need to move this. Now, not a big deal because I only have three of the sew tights on there. So I'm going to remove this one and this one. 
and I'm going to pull this this way. That looks good. And now it's really easy to just pop this back on. This is so much easier than pins. I have used the red snapper system and it's good as well. But I like this because with the red snapper system you get a bulk as the quilt rolls up. That looks really good. That looks nice and straight and smooth on there. Okay. Now I want to roll this up and I'm looking to make sure we're not getting any kind of ripples or bumps in here on this top railing. This is looking good. I like it. Just make sure it's nice and smooth. Now my edges over here on both sides, they're not together. Don't worry about that. Don't get hung up on that. Okay. It does not matter if those edges are not exactly perfect. What matters is that your top is straight on the backing. Okay, here's my seam, and it is right on top of this railing, exactly where I want it, and that makes me very happy. I'm not seeing any kind of ripples or anything in here. This is going on nice, very nice. I'm not pressing real hard. This looks great. Okay, we have a little bit of play right here, that's good. So now I'm gonna go ahead and take the time to put these on. I'm gonna put one in the center of the two and another one in the center and another one in the center. Very good. And then same goes for right here on this end. Put this to the seam line, one in the center and one here and one here. And this is looking so good. Now I've got good tension, magnetic tension on this. I'm going to finish it out. Look how nice and smooth that is. And now I'm going to go ahead and put sew tights and in and fill in the gaps. And don't forget, we only have five sew tights on the top. We have to go and do the same thing on the top. Look how quick this is. So much better than pinning. Oh my goodness. If you are quilting for other people, these will pay for themselves. I'm telling you. My poor arthritic, osteoarthritic hands love the magnets, especially when it's time to take them off. You can straddle the uh, magnetic backings that are in here. Let me show you one with the backing. I haven't done that. So here it is, and there's the backing on it. And you just push it to the side to pull them apart. And the backings are what are sewn inside of the railing, on the side of the leader. All right, I am ready to wind up this backing. Let me get this nice and taut. That looks good. Look at that, no droopies, love it. You can purchase an additional handle to put on this railing right here. So I'm gonna unlock this and let this go, roll it back, I've got a little bit of a fold right here, we don't want that, nice and straight, looks good, there's that seam, it looks super straight, and it's going straight, again it's right on top where I want it, nice and straight. Now, I will tell you, the thing about sew tights, you do need, you need to be careful about getting this top railing full of sew tights too far down to let the sew tights drop too far down. They will want to stick to the idle rail. They will want to stick to the bed of the machine. 
So that's really important to keep in mind. You will use a little bit more backing fabric than normal, but it's really a small price to pay in my opinion. I will begin with the sew tights on the back of this rail. So let me go ahead and put these on nice and straight. Okay, everything looks nice and straight there. So now I'm going to go in and fill in the gaps. One short. I need one more. You might notice I even have them holding down the ends of the leaders to the railings. They go through all of that fabric and they work great to do that. Okay, so this is on now. And when I am ready to load batting and the top, so you can just move these around because they can straddle pockets or they can be right on straight with a pocket, whatever you want. I've got a perfectly fat, flat backing. This looks amazing. And using this method with watching in the well and making sure you don't have any kind of wrinkles come in or drag lines, that term is used in garment making. Um, you're not gonna get that droopy end like you do. So it works really good. And I am going to go ahead and drop this back so that the sew tights right there the sew tights are right here on the back of this pole I maybe could go another half inch or so so now I'm going to start the top line of my quilt batting right here so I'm losing about a hand width of fabric instead of being able to pull it all the way up here and then go like that. So that can be a contributing factor for some people. For me, especially taking them off, oh, it is amazing. It's just boop, 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 and they just come off like butter. It's great. So I just wanted to show you how to load a backing using sew tights. I love these things. I love doing it on this frame from Sew Machines Plus for the King Quilter 2 Elite, and I'm ready to get the quilt loaded. We'll talk to you soon. You guys go sew something. Bye.